Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about an important development in communication in the last couple of decades, and that is the global positioning system. This is a system that uses electromagnetic communication in order to pinpoint the position of anyone on Earth. So let's get started. The global positioning system is a system of 24 satellites that are in orbit around the Earth. They're launched up there over a series of uh, a fair number of years. Each satellite contains a very, very precise clock on board. It also contains a radio transmitter, which sends out information about this clock. The satellites will continually emit microwaves, which will go down to the surface of the Earth, and the microwaves contain information about the exact time at which they were emitted. And that time will be according to its very, very accurate atomic clock. Now, a GPS receiver can receive these microwaves that the satellites are sending out. And if it receives a number of different signals from different satellites, it's able to figure out its position. It does this with something called trilateration. In order to use trilateration, it needs to be able to decode the time signals sent by each satellite. Why are the time signals useful? The receiver uses the messages in order to calculate the distance to each satellite. And we can see the equation that you do that with over here. Does it seem familiar at all? We know that the receiver has to be somewhere on the surface of the Earth, and we know the exact location of the satellite, and we know the time at which the satellite sent its signal. If we have three satellites, and they're all sending a certain time from their clock, we can determine exactly how long it took for each message to get there. So that's our value for t. We know that the messages travel at the speed of light, and so that's c, and we know that distance equals speed times time. So by taking the time delay of the clock reading, Multiplying the speed of light, we can get the distance between the receiver and the satellite. So why is this useful, I hear you ask? Well, it's not useful if we have only one distance on its own. But if we have more than one, then it can be very, very handy. The problem with a signal like this is that although we know this distance, we don't know whether it's straight down this way, or maybe if it's down this way, or maybe if it's behind this fellow or in front of this fellow, something like that. That could be the same distance, but it's quite a different location. In fact, if we have the signal for only one satellite, then if we know that, if we know exactly where the satellite is and exactly our distance from it, then our location could be anywhere on a little circle on the surface of the Earth. And all the points on the circle will be exactly the same distance from the satellite. But we don't have only one satellite, we have lots, 24 in fact so that at any point on the Earth's surface, you'll always have at least three satellites communicating with you. So if we know the distance to one satellite, then we can narrow down our location to a circle. We're not somewhere inside the circle, we're somewhere on the edge, but we have no idea where. So let's look at what another satellite says our location is. It will also give a possible circle of locations. So if we have two satellites, we get a second circle, but this second circle will cross over with the first. And that means that if we have to be on the edges of both circles, then there are only two places we can be at. We can be at the top intersection or the bottom intersection. There's no other point on either circle that will match up with the data from the first circle we got. We have to be on the edge of both of these circles at the same time. So what if we ask a third satellite where we are? Well, it'll give us a circle of possibilities too. And if we combine that with the first two circles of possibilities, we end up with only one location. Remember that these circles will probably not all be the same size. They'll more often be very different sizes, depending on whether the satellite is directly overhead or maybe quite a fair distance off from where you currently are. Now, if we use modern technology and transistors and microchips and things like that, then we can build very, very small GPS receivers. The mathematics for trilateration aren't all that complicated. We don't need a supercomputer to do them. So these tiny little GPS receivers, once they receive signals from three different satellites, can very rapidly calculate exactly where they are based on the readings from GPS satellites. And because the clocks on board the GPS satellites are so accurate, if you wanted to be clever, you could have your GPS receiver also tell you the time. And it'll be able to tell you the time to a great amount of accuracy because of how good the clocks on board the satellites are. Remember that the clocks need to be able to time the difference between the light leaving the satellite and the light arriving at the receiver. Light travels so incredibly fast, there's not going to be very much of a delay. 
the clocks need to be accurate enough to measure that delay to a great deal of precision. So if you have a GPS receiver, then you can both tell the time and pinpoint your location using the very accurate distances you get from those times. So what do we use it for? Well, you know as well as me that we often see GPSs in cars or taxis combined with a computer system that will tell you exactly where to go to get to a point on the map. We can also see them in tracking applications. So we could attach a GPS receiver to a turtle, for example, and that would tell us exactly where the turtle was. We can also use it for espionage or to track the locations of a suspect in a criminal case or for fun. There are some people who will give the locations, the latitude and longitude of a buried treasure, for example, and people can use a GPS device in order to figure out the exact location of that treasure. Finally, we can use it for timekeeping, one of the more novel uses of it, I suppose. We call it Global Positioning System for a reason. It's built in order to locate things on the surface of the Earth. However, because the clocks on board are so accurate, we don't need to use it for positioning. We can use it for timekeeping as well. So that's the end of the theory. We've learned a bit about how the GPS system works and exactly how it uses trilateration to narrow down exactly where you are on the surface of the Earth. Thank you.